two, two one. one. I'd like to welcome to the Love and Reality podcast from the Circle Season Six, Miss Cassie. How are you today? Hello, I am wonderful. So excited to be here. Yeah, I'm very excited to chat. Uh, I love the the vibrant energy that you brought to the show, and and we'll dive a little bit more into the show in a little bit. But my first question to you is this. Tell us a little bit about you, your background, and maybe something we didn't see on the show. Well, I feel like I pretty much laid it all out there. Um, I'm extremely goofy and ditzy and silly. And you know what? I just embrace it. So, um, I actually, like I said, I feel like I pretty much laid it all out there. I married my high school sweetheart. That ended in divorce. I've got two children of my own. I met my now uh, fiance. He's got three kids. We've got one big crazy family. Um, I'm a cheer coach, a mom, the maid around here. Uh, my soon to be husband, he owns his own business. I run the finances with that. It's like running around like with a chicken with their head cut off. I just do all these things. And then I had the great idea to just go on a reality show. I mean, if that doesn't sum up how big of a hot mess that I am, nothing will. <laughs> yeah, I think that's one of the one of the beautiful things I loved about your story was is uh, same boat. Do you know what I mean? I I was married, got divorced, married the love of my life. She's got three children. I have one child, one shy of what you guys got going on. But I loved your story based on that because, you know, it's the idea of, you know, having children, not being able to find love post children, that type of thing after you get divorced. But I just love that. That's what really attracted me to your story. So obviously, let's talk about applying for the show. What made you want to go on the circle? Well, um, I am a huge, huge, huge reality TV fan. I watch every reality show there is across all networks. And but my all time favorite, and this is going to make me sound like ridiculous, but Big Brother, the very first episode of every season, when that music starts, I start crying and I'm like, oh, my God, Cass, you are a psycho. But I love it. And I knew, you know, I've got five kids. I can't do Big Brother. That's three months. If you make it, even if you make it to the jury house, you're gone three months. I can't do that. So my friend, Michael Davidson, um, he was on The Traders season one. He was like, I really think you should audition for this show. I had never watched The Circle. And I was like, well, you know, it can't be too hard, even though I've never watched it. And I applied. And after I applied, within five minutes, I get a phone call. And I thought, oh, crap. I'm going to have to go watch this show. Luckily, it wasn't, you know, nothing too hard that I couldn't do. But no, and I know that sounds terrible, but I had never even watched it until after I had applied. When you... You get the call. You have that conversation. What was it called to find out you were going to be on the show itself, actually? Well, here's the, here's another circle twist. They never tell you that you are actually going on to the circle. Never. Um, they'll say, OK, we're moving you forward to the next step. You're going towards, you know, the next process. I get the phone call. His name was Matt. He's lovely. I love him. He said, hey, um, we're sending you to the next step. We're flying you out to Atlanta. This does not mean that you are on the show, but you're still in the running. And once I got there, you still do interviews. And they're sneaky about it, too. Um, when I first got out of the car, when we showed up to the hotel, there's this guy standing there. Everybody up until then, they've introduced themselves. They did not tell me who he was. And I thought, you know what? I know better than this. So, of course, I turned it on and come to find out he was a producer. So then, like, the next day, I walk in and do my final interview, and there he is. And I was like, I knew it. I knew it. But, yeah, and even the morning of I went into the circle, they still did not tell me. They just told me to get ready, to be prepared. I get there. I walk in, and then I'm in. So you walk in. What is your thought process as soon as you are locked in and you know you're going to be on the show? Kind of what was going through your head then? Am I allowed to say this? I got instant diarrhea. <laughs> like I was a nervous wreck. I was like, oh my God. Like I know I'm delusional. And I had like hyped myself up. Like, yeah, you're going, Cass. You're going. But when then I actually walked in, I was like, oh crap, I'm here. What am I going to do? What was I thinking? <laughs> 
It was so exciting, but honest to God, I blacked out. I couldn't hardly tell you anything that happened, what went on, what I was thinking, because I was I was gone. I was gone. What? Obviously, you have an option being on the circle. You can either play a catfish or you can play a version of yourself. Did any time did you think that maybe you would play catfish? No, never, um, because it took me, this is going to get a little deep, a little personal. It took me a really long time, especially after having my children and, you know, your hormonal and all that and then a divorce. It took me a long time to truly find myself and to love myself. And I was to the point like, I love me. And if you don't love me, oh, well, but I love me. And I don't want to go in as anybody else. I want to go be myself because, you know, I'm sure you've read articles and stuff. I In my intro video, I was told nobody was going to like me. Nobody was going to want me with me being single, chubby, with my kids, whatever. And I wanted to prove that they do and that they will because, you know, that's how I looked at it. So, no, being a catfish never even crossed my mind. And I besides, I, like I said, I am I love me, and I wouldn't even know how to be anybody else, you know? <laughs> I barely can control me. <laughs> I was about to say the same thing. I can barely be the person I'm supposed to be every day, let alone trying to make up a whole nother person, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, I've got multiple personalities. I guess I could have just gave one a name, but other than that, I was going to beat myself. <laughs> um the first couple days what's kind of that vibe what's kind of like getting used to some of the atmosphere obviously the big one obviously when i hear you have five kids you're like oh my god like there's nothing better than being kid free we all look and i want to hear everybody listen to this at home we love our kids okay we, day more we than do but what? a day away from our <laughs> kids is like a gold mine so you had a little bit of time so that freedom there obviously of being you know yourself in a bubble kind of as well but what was it kind of getting used to the game playing and stuff like that in the early stages um for me what killed me the most was it quiet there is no sound literally no music no internet no phone no nothing it was you know the dead silence but once the game actually started when that first alert come it was like okay game mode so everything else just kind of went out the window because I was so laser focused on coming home with the money and taking my kids to Disney World. That was my goal. So I don't know. It was, like I said, it was just like a lot switch. Okay, Cass, let's go. We, we're going to do this. So it was, wasn't really too much of like an adjustment period because it started so quick. I think I was in there maybe 10 minutes and I got my first alert. We'll talk about that first batch when you when you're watching it back and you're seeing it what 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 do you what goes through your mind what what do you what like what's going through your mind as you're watching episodes one through four drop i mean you're on netflix you know what i mean like worldwide netflix uh, what was going through your mind and what's kind of been the reaction as well outside of it uh my first initial thought was do i really sound like that <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, I sound like a bale of hay. Like, <laughs> like I knew, you know, I'm from the deep south Kentucky, but I did not know I sounded like that. So after about, you know, episode three, when I really got used to hearing myself, there was some stuff that I wish I could go back like if, and change and stuff. But to me, I was me. And anybody who truly knows me was like, yep, she's silly. She's goofy whatever she doesn't take much serious it's go with the flow and i'm really proud of myself for for saying for staying so true to myself um and then of course we one of the big sh twist of the series this year was the introduction of the ai we had max the ai which was crazy to even think about to compete with a computer which is a whole conversation probably for itself but when it in episode five, we just that was just aired recently. Um, obviously, it was revealed that Steffi was eliminated, and then of course not the AI, but Max was revealed himself as the AI. How shocking was that entire thing from finding out you were competing against an AI, and then of course finding out that Max was the AI? Well, first off, I didn't even know what an AI was. Couldn't tell you what that was. Um, so I was a little confused, you know, per usual. But I was so dead set that it was Steffi. Um, just because I mean, as a viewer, you can say it was pretty, you know, same old, same old. Like she had to be. But when they revealed that she wasn't, I thought, oh, crap. 
I have no idea because for my game, I didn't care about the catfishes. That's not how you win the circle by getting the catfishes out. So I wasn't really even thinking, what about a robot? You know what I mean? So I had no clue. Didn't have an inkling of an idea as to who it could be. And then, of course, kind of after this, I was rooting hardcore for you after you decided to throw a little shade at Miles, of course, for, um, you know, you kind of threw a little salt into the wound, which might have been might have led to your ultimate demise. But it doesn't matter at the time. It was hilarious. We're, we're standing that moment. But um, wh why did you kind of choose to kind of throw the salt in the wound in that moment there? OK, well, that was misconstrued 100 oh. percent. Yes. Like I said, I'm silly. I'm goofy. I love all things funny. Like, everybody is hating on Miles because he appears to be an a-hole. I think it's funny. He's literally saying what everybody else is thinking. I'm blonde. He's blonde. I literally thought it was funny that he was the AI engineer. And he didn't, because in my mind, huh, the AI engineer couldn't even catch the AI. Ha ha, blonde moment. I was cracking up. But what they didn't show was the part where I was laughing. They waited until I'm just sitting there after I had spoke. And they cut it to that part. But in the real life moment, I was dying laughing. I literally thought it was funny because it was something that I would do. Screw up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's true because it, it, it's funny. And it and, and that does bring a definitely a different element to it by saying that kind of like they do edit it a certain way. Obviously, of course they do. But it, it's, it's funny because like, you're right, though. Like, I thought the same thing. Like, everybody should have thought that oh, the AI guy couldn't even figure out the AI was part of the shit. You know what I mean? Like that was, it was hilarious to me because I didn't feel like it was a, a shade. It was just hilarious moment because you're calling out a person that does it for a living and couldn't figure out who the AI was. You know what I mean? That to me is quite hilarious. Um, well, I lost it too because I have a hundred blonde moments a day. And that's why I threw in there hashtag blonde moment because it's true, but no, it caught took the wrong way. <laughs> For sure. Take us behind the rating system. What, like, we see it every week um, or every couple episodes or whatever it is when we see you guys. What's that deliberating process that we don't see? Because we only see little snippets of it. But, like, take us a little bit behind the scenes for you. Like, when you're sitting down getting ready to rate the cast, was there, like, a game plan that you had or was it just off of vibes? What, what was that like for? Um, Going in, I had no game plan. I had no strategy um, because I knew if I had one and the circle throws in a twist and I would have to start from scratch, I'd be screwed. I'd be like, Ugh. <laughs> so I thought, you know what? We're just going to go with the flow. We'll just go how I feel. And my first writings, I did go truly off the vibes and the conversations that we had had. And then my second writings, I jumped the gun. I should have waited until I had stronger connections more conversations and when there wasn't so many people and I should have waited until it was like dwindled down to flip it for me to go up because in my mind it made so much sense and it still makes sense to me but I just didn't deliver it very well but no they do they make you start from number one and explain why and you go all the way down to the bottom so now we're going to get to the sad aspect of things you we see that you were in seventh place when you find that out, how did you feel? Oh, I knew my game was over. Like, I knew right then and there that I could go pack that pink suitcase and that I was going out the door. I was devastated. But then, like I said, I'm delusional. And I hyped myself back up. I'm like, well, there's still a chance because, you know, such and such could win or such and such. And then when it showed Corey Tyler, who I was in alliance with, I thought, you know what? You may skim by right now. And as you, you know, saw, I didn't, but no, it was, it was bad. I knew my time was up. I, I just knew it. I felt it in the gut. The show, you get eliminated. Obviously you have the decision to go visit somebody. Um, was there any deliberation or was it going to be Olivia, which uh, Olivia that you were going to visit? Um, no, I went through um, Olivia. I thought about going to see her or him. And then Miles, I wanted to be like, screw you, buddy. You know, we were in the lines. I was joking, learn how to take a joke. And then Corey Tyler, hey, sissy, you literally just told me you had my bag and you just sent me out the door. Forget you. You know, but ultimately, I'm a very forgiving person and it's a game. 
at the end of the day, it's a game. And I cannot sit here and say that I wouldn't have done the same exact thing. That's a lot of money. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to go visit my CC Olivia. We started out strong. She was super nice. Always had my back. And then lo and behold, <laughs> Olivia was Brandon. <laughs> So take us through that moment. Like, you know what I mean? Obviously, you're getting ready to walk through this door and you're expecting to meet Olivia and you see Brandon. What's going through your head in that in that particular moment right there? Oh, my God. They cut that big time. Because, well, as you can see, I walk in and I'm speechless. And it wasn't because it was Brandon. His room was so ugly. Like, my room was bright and colorful and there's glitter everywhere and it's just perfect. And the TV makes his room look a lot brighter. But in person, it was like a dungeon. It was so dark. And I stand there and I looked around and I said, this room is so ugly. How do you stand it? And then I looked over and there he is on the couch. And then I just start screaming. Well, you saw it. Now, after that part, that was not cut whatsoever. I see him. I scream. He's like, oh, I'm brain. I'm like, oh, I did. <laughs> you know, because I literally... I, you're just so, you just black out, literally. You just black out. And I was, like I said earlier, I wasn't laser focused on people who were catfishes. So it, I, it didn't even click to me that that wasn't even her. <laughs> right, you were more concerned about how ugly the room was. Yeah, huh? It was so dark. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, all right, so obviously at, towards the end of this week's episode, we saw... Uh, episode eight there we saw and then of course throughout that we call we saw the introduction to the ride or die which was is definitely another twist because this is i say through at least eight episodes we've seen more twists than any other season yet um my question to you is who do you think would have been your ride or die based on the questions that were asked olivia for sure i really think that because I felt like through the conversations, and especially now, like as a viewer, seeing what he was really thinking, you know, versus what he was saying, we, we're besties. Like even right now in real life, we're besties. Like he come down this weekend and stayed all weekend with me. So I still hold on to Cassie Olivia Strong. <laughs> For sure. All right. Since you didn't get to play the game. We're going to do it right now. We're going to go through the battle of these same questions, and you're going to give your answer. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll play with you, too, here. Okay. Um, all right. So the first question was, fight one bear or fight 500 chickens? I'm from the South. I can go out there and mangle some chickens in about 2.5 seconds. Well, thank you. Like, <laughs> first off, anybody, I, anybody that has said bear or would say bear, I don't think they've ever seen a bear. Like, no. one bear? No. No. I feel like I could fight off 500 chickens. You know what I mean? Like, easy. Easy. <laughs> uh, and then you can wrangle them all up, and then you can probably at least get a couple dinners out of that, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I'll get like a 100-piece chicken nugget. I mean, win-win. Exactly. <laughs> <win. laughs> all right. Um, cozy night in, wild night out. Did you not read my bio? Cozy night in. I'm in bed by nine All o'clock. Day every day. I'm too old for the to the the going out stuff. That that hurts too hard. Um, photo phone photos get leaked or Google searches get leaked. Oh, for sure the Google. You can't get on my phone. I get in big trouble. <laughs> Exactly. Same. I was like Google all day, every day. I'm like, all you're going to find is like random, random things like cooking recipes. You know what I mean? Like dumb yeah. things. Yeah, what time? No, what, what's the school calendar? You know. What I mean? Yeah, exactly. What's on the lunch menu at the school today? Because my kid's super picky. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> all right. This easy. is yeah. No sex for a year. No social media for a year. Uh, I don't know. I'm pretty addicted to both. Uh, <laughs> I would say no social media for a year. Go yeah, ghost mode. Yeah, it, it was definitely hard. It, that one to me is like a no social media, I think. And then it was like, maybe, I don't know. It's probably social media though. Um, This one was crazy. Find your parents' sex tape or parents find your sex tape. Ew. <laughs> to both. Exactly. <laughs> Ew to both. Um... I think I would be more embarrassed if they see me and I obviously know they done it because I'm here. So I would I would just watch theirs. Exactly. I, I thought I had the same thought process because I'm like, it's gross either way, but I'm like, 
I can't like get over the idea of them watching my, like that just, I can't get over that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that's just, no. it's awful. They would be scarred for a lot. <laughs> I would be scarred for a lot. Exactly. No matter what, no yeah. matter what you're getting scarred for life in that scenario. All right. Just a few more questions here before we go. Obviously there's been talks now we have, we're six seasons into the circle. This is about to be the six. We're going to crown the six, uh, our season six winner here in just a few weeks. Very, very excited about that. However, if for season seven, they have a redemption season, could we see Cassie back on the circle? Well, is can I do a spoiler alert? Uh-oh, absolutely. Well, spoiler alert, they filmed season seven the very next day we left. Oh. Literally. As one player got blocked, they come in there, wiped the room out, redecorated it, Already had the cast there because there was actually another spoiler. One of our house guests, house guests, you know, I'm a big brother fan. One <laughs> of our contestants was actually supposed to be on season seven. Ooh. Yeah, so season seven is already filmed, but now season eight, would I come? Absolutely. Heck yeah. I think it would be cool. All right, season eight. I think it would be cool to have like a redemption. None of the winners are allowed to be there. No, I don't think, no, no winners allowed. Yes, no winners. But you have so many people. Like you could have anybody come back that wants a second chance at trying to win. I think it would be very cool and um, definitely an interesting element. Um, all right. So my final question to you is this: When you look back on your time throughout your time on the entire circle, what is something that you learned about yourself throughout the process? a good one i've never that i'm strong that i'm a lot stronger than what i thought because when i went to the airport i bawled like a baby i almost taught myself out of it i actually told him i'm not going let's just turn around he was like are you crazy you're absolutely going he like literally pushed me out the truck and i thought i can't do this being away from my kids my family i'm all alone i'm so used to having all these people around me i can't do it but I'm really strong and I'm really proud of myself because that is hard being there, you know, no communication all by yourself. It is hard. And I've done it. I've done it. I love that. Thank you so, 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 so much for your time today. Of course.